Get Sports Focus here, Alfred Joaquin, with the Uncut segment, sitting down at our one of our favorite places in downtown San Jose, Royce Cafe. I'm here with the GOAT, <laughs> one of the best, if not probably the best uh, special teams coach um, in the Bay Area, uh, Coach Kinjemi, a.k.a. Coach Vito from Lapitas High School. And I say the GOAT and the best because I know you're not just a really good coach, but you have also helped a lot of guys. And, and I think that's one of the most important things. And we're gonna talk a little bit about your experience, your history, where you're at right now. Obviously the Milpitas Trojans. Yeah, yeah. The state champions. Um, so coach, how, were, how was everything so far with you? Everything's good. Um, thanks for having me. It's really an honor and a pleasure. It's just great opportunity. Love the stuff that you guys do. and. Um, it's been great. I mean, I'm still kind of on the, I told someone the other day, I'm still on the banquet tour because it's just still kind of, it's kind of surreal going through all that and, you know, the experiences, but we can get into that definitely. And, um, uh, definitely looking forward to it. Well, it, we, I normally start by asking, you know, the coaches to talk about their background because yeah. I know like not a lot of people know you guys, they see you on the sidelines and. A lot of times when we do this, you know, players would hit us up and be like, I didn't know that coach was this and that. And so let, let's let's uncover some of that stuff. So right. tell, us a bit, right. tell us a little bit about your, your background um, and how you got here. I was actually born in Lansing, Michigan. Um, ah. My family was, uh, was a couple months old when we moved out to Los Gatos, where I grew up. Um, family still lives in the same house I grew up in, so that's pretty cool. Um, local kid. Went to Lee High School in San Jose. Go Longhorns. Um, that's right. <laughs> always. Always. Um, West Valley Junior College. Um, really didn't get recruited out of high school. Um, went to West Valley two years. Uh, had a great experience there. Um, got a football scholarship to New Mexico State. Nice. Um, wasn't really uh, my cup of tea. It wasn't my first choice, actually. I was getting recruited by Oklahoma, but they wanted a freshman instead of a JC transfer at the end. And that's part of the recruiting process. You go through all that stuff. And right, right. it's kind of ironic because when you watch the 30 for 30 on ESPN, that was all the Bosworth teams, which is the same era that I would have been playing in. So ah. kind of funny. So ended up uh, leaving New Mexico State, went back to uh, local here, um, was looking at a place to go, and uh, ended up finishing my playing career at Cal State Hayward. Um, we had a really good team, got up to six in the country, um, had a lot of great relationships, played against actually a ton of guys that were in NFL camps and stuff like that. It's a shame that a lot of the Division II schools are gone now, those football programs are gone. It was a great avenue for those kids uh, yeah. to get in because maybe they couldn't get into a D-run program for grades or whatever, but it just, I mean, talented guys, I mean, playing against guys like Brent Jones at Santa Clara. and. You know, a good friend of mine, John Failer at Santa Clara, and, you know, Mike Wise, the old lineman from UC Davis, and, you know, on and on, there was just guys that were just so talented there and blessed to, you know, play at that level, and then um, after that, had the opportunity to be in a couple of NFL camps as a kicker, and uh, never made a final cut, but just a great experience to, uh, to do, and those are the great relationships that you really have about everything. That's the best part about it, is the relationships that you're going to establish over time, and you know, one of the reasons why I, you know, have been, you know, back into the coaching and back into the sidelines for about the last 10 years. Well, speaking of relationships, um, you, you've been at Mopitas for quite a while. And I know Coach Kelly, I mean, Coach King has been there yep. for quite some 29 time. 29 years. Wow. So let's talk about how you ended up at Mopitas. And so I actually played college football at junior college against coach king he would went to san jose city um he was actually at cal state hayward um my first year that i played there um it's kind of funny because the coach back then and the coach now you look at him and he was a lot of the same person and who he was and the drive and determination <laughs> and everything that he's been you know successful at mopitas firm it's you know and that's really how i got tied into him there and uh Honestly, it's been one of the best decisions I ever made, uh, being back on the sidelines. I used to help out at different uh, different schools here and there because I would have been working with kickers, punters, and long snappers and returners for, you know, 30-plus years. And always were just, you know, doing more individual stuff, would be on the sideline at a particular game here and there, but not on staff. And when Kelly 
you know, said to me one day, you know, hey, I want you to be on my staff. It was, you know, a great opportunity. I miss being on the sidelines, and it's the best decision I've ever made. It's just I've got so many great memories from being at Milpitas just the last 10 years and a lot of the kids that have come through our program and uh, the parents and the administrations and stuff. And it's, you know, and to have it culminate like it did this year is pretty good. But having the alumni around is a big part of it too, definitely. Well, there's one thing that I do want to ask you about. <clears throat> um, not a lot of people probably know about this. I mean, the kids probably don't even know about this. But this all-time record uh, as far as wins. Yeah, <laughs> Coach King right now is number eight all-time in Central Coast section wins at 209. Wow. Not a lot of people are going to know that. But there's only one active coach that's um, ahead of him right now, which is uh, – Mike Janda from Bellarmine, who's done phenomenal things there over the years. And, you know, it just uh, goes to show you that, you know, a lot of times the longevity of some of these coaches really stands the test of time because yeah. not just what they do as coaches, but what they do for, for young men and putting them in the great spots like that. But I keep telling Coach King, 209 and counting. So <laughs> hopefully, you know, I keep telling him, I, oh, it was it was pretty cool about, I've been at Mel Peters for 10 years now and, to win a NorCal championship and a state championship in my 10th year there and to win my 100th career game at Milpitas the night of the state title was unbelievable. That, that Definitely is a great memory. That is special. And you, you guys have had some really classic battles against Bellarmine. And, I mean... Finally got over the hump. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? Finally. Exactly, right? Um, Finally. But, I mean, just talk about these last maybe three, four years... Um, with Milpitas just really putting the, the, the city on the map? You know, it's it's been a great experience because we have gone through a lot of stuff that I'll elaborate on a little bit more, but um, going through a lot of the success that our program has had, um, section champs in 06, um, section champs in 09, uh, which was my first title there, um, section champs in 2013, and then uh, to really be the only team in the Central Coast section that's been to NorCal Regionals three years of the three years that they've had the new format is pretty special for us as a public school. Um, having two heartbreaks in those NorCal Regionals as well, losing to Camp Alindo two yeah. years ago by three, and then losing to Pleasant Valley Chico last year by three, and um, really I think laid the foundation for us and what we've done as far as you know, we had a lot of experience coming back and a lot of kids that had gotten a lot of playing experience and really matured and came to a culmination this year, definitely. And you guys have always been, I mean, as far as I can remember, you know, since I was in high school, it, it's, Mopitas has been a powerhouse. There's a lot of talent, a lot of D1 yeah. guys, NFL guys. Um, I don't know if you have the list, but maybe you can kind of talk about um, some of the guys that have come from you know Peter. you look at you know we can go way back now um kim bo camper the old miami dolphin is mm -hmm. a milpitas alum um, a lot of people don't know about uh samuel air high school as well which closed which was in milpitas um, they combined the two schools oh i see so uh that's where the current milpitas sports complex is they still use the the house uh the housing there and uh, the rooms and stuff for continuing adults education which is awesome and night school for kids and so the facility is getting used but being the only gig in town in milpitas is pretty awesome and them having a lot of the alumni that they've had there from dedrick roper to uh you know brandon carswell brandon to carswell. uh you know tab perry um to you know delta o'neill who's being honored tomorrow night actually um friday night uh he's being inducted into the milpitas hall of fame wow. uh, along with our 2017 state title team so had some pretty great kids come through the program um i'm pretty proud of the last five years we have about 11 kids in division one football um, we had david cruz camp at nevada reno mm -hmm. ali'i matao and trey hartley at san jose state um uh, Vita Vea and Jason Scrimpos at Washington, um, Christian Hongana at Washington State, um, Squally Canada and Travion Green at BYU, 
and uh, Vita Musica, who just signed with Alabama a few days ago. Uh -huh. um, and our two from players CSM, this right? year from CSM, yeah. yes. Great program up there. Shout out to them. Coach Tullock does a great job. That's right. Um, I do a little consulting there, and all, as well as I do some consulting for their kicking game at San Jose State. Um, great kids there. And, and they are current players this year, more than likely. Uh, Tuni Fafita is probably going to go to Oregon. Wow. And obviously everybody knows about. Is um, that breaking news? Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> we'll see. Um, hopefully it will be. I know I know that they want him. So wow. um, hopefully that's going to work out for him. And then ultimately everybody knows about Tariq Bracey. Oh, and yeah. His opportunities at you know Notre Dame. And it's kind of a funny story. So Tariq and I, we sit on the same seats of the bus every single road trip this year from every single away game we went to, to the night at Camp Alindo when we went to NorCal Regionals, when he told me uh, he was committing to Notre Dame then. And, oh, wow. Uh, and then driving down to El Centro and uh, going down there and coming home and, you know, just having that memory with him. And it was funny. We went to the state capitol and had a <laughs> charter bus about a, two weeks ago and same thing. There we are, back of the bus on the right. <laughs> so it's just a special memory, just a really great kid. I remember when Notre Dame first came out. Uh, now, granted, I am not a Notre Dame fan whatsoever, <laughs> but um, I'm a Michigan fan. But when Notre Dame came out and really liked him and was offering him, I, I, I said to myself, and I actually said to him too, I go, I think that's a great opportunity for you because of just the doors it's going to open for him. and. Absolutely. And I mean, that's just, I'm so happy for him and so proud that, uh, you know, our best superstar player was one of the most humble kids I've ever met. You know, I've met a couple of kids like that throughout the process. Um, Najee Harris was another kid like that that I met at the Combine, at uh, the Nike Combine at San Leandro about three years ago, the end of his sophomore year. Um, talked to him for about a half hour, just about everything, you know, just a great kid and to see him have all the successes that he is now. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's just been a great opportunity. That's one of the things I think I like best about all the coaching stuff and doing my own football camps and special teams camps that I get to work with a lot of kids all over the place. And that's really the best part about it is establishing relationships with tons of kids, even that I don't do. And, coaching in the all-star games like we've talked about before and that's right and and that's the definitely a fun fun experience well i definitely want to talk about the all-star game um later on you know before we end this but um speaking of camps you you do a lot of consulting and you've worked with some of the kickers from uh like san jose state and, and csm yes um is that something that you do uh, I do it mostly, I think, because it's more my passion than anything. Exactly, because when yeah, you right, think right. of special teams and stuff, a lot of people will look at the wayside on them. And I tell people all the time this year, I go, well, I go, our special teams in the state title game scored 19 points. <laughs> we were four for four on PATs, three for three on field goals. And Tariq Bracey had a 57-yard punt return. And we needed all of them. And it's we've a game been, changer. We've, we've prided ourselves on, I tell our kids all the time, that we are definitely going to be – the best special teams, not just in this section, but one of the best in Northern California, the state, because we put time into it. I have some friends of mine that coach in uh, various colleges, and they're like, you know, they say the same thing. And uh, you just have to put the time into it because it's it's a third of your game plan. A lot of people don't think that. Um, an old coach told me that one time, and it's definitely stuck with me for a long time that it's just super important and working with, you know, punters and kickers and long snappers and returners and it, they are game changers because the biggest momentum swings is oh, yeah. the stuff you're going to have on special teams. Um, and, and, you know, that's the best part about it. And uh, having the opportunity to work with these kids is just, it's, it's priceless. Well, since we're in the subject of camps and individual training, <clears throat> I mean, something's going on right now. I mean, it, it doesn't really have anything to do with, with special teams or kicking, but um, as far as uh, you know, we're involved with seven on seven, mm -hmm. and we believe in seven on seven as mm -hmm. far as what it can do to help skilled players. Um, but there's Absolutely. been a, a back and forth battle between some college coaches, some high school coaches, being against seven on seven, and some trainers and some independent coaches that are uh, for or against 
uh, you know, other coaches bad mouthing 707. What, what I don't even know if you. You know, I can totally, that, I, can, I do, because I know a lot of individual coaches that coach quarterbacks or uh -huh, coach yes. receivers or, and also coach, whether it be KT Prep, Epic 7, a lot of these, you know, seven on seven teams. And I think it's, I think it's necessary now because a lot of kids are really believing that they need it as part of their regime. Um, maybe they're getting a better as a player and stuff like that, but Ultimately, I've always believed that, you know, most of your time is going to be dedicated to your school, whether it's in the weight room, which is the most important in the off season, um, which is, you know, one of the reasons why a lot of these programs are successful is because they know that all the work is put in between January to June or July. Um, the unfortunate thing is, you know, there's a lot of areas that, you know, we're bound by having certain times that we can throw, so um, we keep to it. Where you know the Central Coast section is, you have ten days to throw. Um, <laughs> there are schools that have football classes, quote unquote, um, that have been grandfathered in that throw. I mean, heck, Southern California, they throw. You know, they've been throwing since January. Um, <laughs> you know, so when they talk about competitive equity and having level playing field when it comes to regionals and state title games, it's not all that stuff. But you know, with all these teams that are doing it, um, I think the kids do find that you know, well, I have to do it because they think that's the norm, and it's really not always the case. Um, certain situations, I think it is, but ultimately, the most exposure you're going to get is through your high school team because. I guarantee you that your KT Prep or Epic 7 or any of those other, you know, great programs that are out there or, you know, all that stuff, how much tied in are they to the school? Grades. That's really what is really the ultimate yes. because I tell our kids all the time, uh, you know, the grades are the important thing. I mean, we, we're blessed to have a great support staff at Mopitas from, you know, I want to give some recognition to some people, definitely. Uh, from our principal Francis Rojas, who is was this is his first year at Mopitas and just done an he's unbelievable a big fan job, of you guys. huge fan <laughs> of us. And the funny thing is, he's not really a football guy, but he's he's definitely like that. He's uh he's gotten to the point to where you know he's just a huge fan and supporter of us. Um, you know, we have our you know athletic director and Jeff Lam, who's been the state athletic director of the year and. The fortunate thing is, like I told him at our banquet, that he got to enjoy a state title as a as an athletic director. But I was most happy for him that he got to enjoy it as a father because his uh, son played on our team. So that well, was that you know a great a now. great memory like that, <laughs> and that's this. It still does. I mean, it just that 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 experience is the best. And you know, from you know having a great staff, from you know Kelly and you know being a part of them and you know a lot of people don't know that you know our staff is what really you know does it for us you know uh you know hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard and you know oh. we have a we have a saying at Melpitas that you know success is often overshadowed by hard work and it's really true because if you put in the time and you stay on the grind you're going to be beneficial to that stuff um our our academic support staff i can't say enough about um uh, Kathy Walensky, Katie Moffitt, uh, or Suzanne Moffitt, excuse me, and uh, uh, Caitlin Bellotti, who um, I don't know if a lot of people know. So Caitlin's a teacher at Milpitas. Um, her grandfather was Terry Malley, the old football coach at Santa Clara, and her uncle is Terry Malley, okay. the current uh, coach at San Jose State. Um, gets it total football family wow. um she's okay. a, i tell her all the time she's as huge a part of this as as any of us coaches are because i tell her i go you have the hard part we have the easy part we get to coach them i go you have to help them with the grades and stuff like that which is the most important which is usually where kids fall short and stuff like this they gotta stay on the studies you have time for everything i tell my players all the time you have time for family you have time for friends you have time for school you have time for all that once your cups start to spill over into each other that's when you have problems time management that's what you have to do and execute the best wow what <clears throat> what, what do you think about rating systems i know there's a lot out there actually I kind of started um, doing some research, and I'm like, <laughs> there's so many entities. We don't do ratings yeah. just because, you know, I... I think rating <laughs> systems are flawed, like anything that you're going to be judging someone on, because 
I've said this more times. I've seen more five stars fail and more three and four stars that right? have succeeded right? <laughs> than anything like that. So you really can't tell a lot of that stuff. Um, you know, it's like, you know, some of the kickers and long snappers I work with, you know, that go to some of these various camps, whether they're long snapping camps with either Coles or Rubio's or kicking camps with Sailor or any of these other ones that, you know, sometimes the rating systems are skewed because of they come to you all the time instead of, hey, let's have the most legit guy to where we can do it that way. So, and a lot of coaches, you know, unfortunately fall into just believing that stuff too. And that's, that's yeah. where they need to do their due diligence and their, and their homework on stuff like that to where it's like, you can't just rely on some service or something like that. I think you really have to be proactive and really understanding and knowing and being a part of it. Definitely. Well, I was talking to a parent who's got a freshman in high school. <clears throat> now, their their child have only played sports for just a couple of years and she asked me about uh, recruiting services and what I think about it and I didn't even really know what to say so I asked her well why don't you forward me some materials let me take a look at it and I'll present it to some coaches and, and see what they think and and one of these recruiting services was billing was going to bill them like 1500 yeah. And I was like, <laughs> well, it's so funny because some of those situations like that, whether they're recruiting services, whether they're club teams, whether it's at the soccer level, the basketball level mm -hmm. with travel teams or baseball or any of that stuff. Um, even some colleges, you know, do they, they do that stuff use as that? generating, you know, money making stuff. Hey, I got a I heard an instance the other day about a coach told me that this this university back east was sending out letters to everybody and this, oh, come to this combine and this and that. And it was $25 a kid. So, I mean, those oh, situations are like money grabs. So, I mean, yeah. you have to really be picky and choosy and really understand and do your homework and research. You can't believe everything you hear and see all the time because that's, I think, the the bummer part about for a lot of parents is they're just misinformed because yes. they're informed by someone that's in the club situation or anything like that. And I, fr I frankly, I'll tell people the truth no matter what, where I think it's best for them, where I think it's worse for them, whether it benefits me or not. You always have to give people uh, the best type of advice for their kid. It's not about money. It's not about anything like that because that's where you have all the problems that you do and run into all the problems that you do. Um, I mean, let's let's be honest. College athletics is a huge money business and generating business. Um, families are always wanting to get their kids out or get in the best opportunity that they can. And the best way you can do that, honestly, is just stay on the grind in the classroom and make sure you're up to that because once you're there, that's the hard part. Because the easy part is playing and, and having the opportunity to play all those sports too. I mean, that's the that's the really the the golden ticket when it comes to that. Because you can always fall back on your education. Exactly. And w one of the examples, um, I mean, you guys keep your players in check when it comes to to their grades. Oh, definitely, definitely. Because we've had situations in the past where we have lost players to grades and academics. Um, since our team has gotten in together, we've definitely, uh, our academic team in the past couple years, I don't think we've really had an ineligible player. Maybe one here and there. Um, but, you know, to have a, you know, three grade checks during the year, which ultimately it is now because you have one at the beginning of the year, you have one at the middle of the year, and you have one at the end of the year before playoffs. So you really have to be on check on that stuff. We're on those people all the time. Even when we do our team dinners and commitment circles, when the, the advisors come in and stuff like that, you know, we're on them about the grades. You have to be important with that. It has to be the first priority to you because it's the same thing when you get hurt. You know, if you're ineligible, you're ineligible. Or you can't make the club in the tub if you're hurt. You know, that's what people always ultimately would talk about. So, you, I mean, you, you, you guys have developed a way to kind of like run your program almost like a college, like a junior college Absolutely. Program. I mean, I think, and that all comes back to Kelly, I mean, and Coach King. I mean, he's definitely been the one that has been the orchestrator of all this. Um, I love that he is so entrenched in Milpitas football because, uh, um, like, the outside stuff and all that, he doesn't worry about any of that stuff. I tell him all the time, I go, I think it's funny how, <laughs> you know, I'll say something to him or refer to a kid, and he'll be like, what? And 
I'll be like, okay, don't worry about it. You just keep focusing on. Is what he you on do. social media at all? N no, I don't <laughs> think I don't think Coach King knows what social media is. Unlike some of us, you know. He doesn't but, have a I mean, at KK. <laughs> no, he doesn't. That's for sure. He is not on Twitter, and he is not on that. But you know, but that just goes to show you who and what he is, and the type of person he is, and you know his upbringing and his family and you know having that you know and he's a former you know Milpitas guy too he's an yeah. alumni so having you know and there's a couple coaches on our staff that are uh, Ray Elzey our wide receivers coach he's a Milpitas alum um, coach King myself and our running backs coach Mike Matthews we all played together at uh, Hayward State um, played against our offensive line coach and our, our athletic trainer, Pono Iona, who played at UC Davis with Kenny O'Brien on those teams. So, um, you know, Evan Matau, who played uh, uh, in the Midwest too, local guy from San Jose City. And, you know, we've had, you know, Bob Carswell, Brandon's dad, played for uh, uh, his coach for us a while too. And, you know, and having all those guys around our program and the stability like that and, uh, Noah's dad, Vic Rodriguez, was on our staff this year, and his son, Vic Rodriguez, has been in our program, and he's was a great addition to us this year. And you know, it's we're a tight knit group. We definitely are because I think that's what you, that's where you're going to breed the best uh, opportunities for not just winning, but you know, life. I tell my kids all the time. I go, I love that you guys are great players, but I want you to be more successful in the most important game you're ever going to play, the game of life. Ooh. And that's really what matters the most. That's deep right there. I got a question. You've been in the game for for some time, and you've, you've seen high school kids probably work with some of them, uh, your school and from other schools. How come some kids don't get recruited, some really talented kids? Um, I think some of it has to do with uh, some of the coaches here and there. Um, maybe they don't have the connections or just – you know, I, I'm stunned at when I see and hear about, you know, kids that don't give, you know, or don't get opportunities and stuff like that. And, you know, I even try to help kids in those situations. And we at Milpitas as a staff have helped people in other situations. And because uh, that's when it really becomes about the kid more than anything, because we have to get him into the best situation that he can, yeah. whether for whatever reason. For whatever reason, so and it doesn't matter what sport. I mean, I've had, and and, and it kind of goes true. back to, you know, when I was at junior college, um, the head basketball coach at West Valley was Bob Burton, who is just a legend in this area. Love that man to death. He's just a great person. And when I was looking at a school when I left New Mexico State, you know, I remember one day he said to me, he goes, "Hey, if you need me to make any calls for you, just let me know." And that really stuck in my mind for the longest time because I've really had that mentality too. And, you know, some of the kids that I work with, and I work with kids that, you know, are in our own section. I work with kids that are in our own league um, because their parents have come to me and want instruction and all that stuff. And that's what it's about because you have to really, you know, put on your particular hat that you're going to wear that day and really, you know, want to develop the kid more than anything. I think that's awesome. I, I do know for a fact there are a lot of coaches not just here in our area but everywhere who i don't think they do enough for their program i mean you know i mean they don't do, they don't really have to right yeah. but it it's just something that well i think when your program get exposed to gets exposure um i think that's a big thing to it when you have you know the opportunity to talk to guys like you know tosh lapui at alabama or akaika malloy at washington or mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know, had the pleasure of talking to Todd Light for about an hour this year when he came to recruit uh, Tariq and Brian Polian, the special teams coordinator at Notre Dame, who's Bill Polian's kid from the Colts. And, you know, getting the opportunities to talk to all these guys, you know, these guys come to our campus. I mean, that's, you know, whether it's USC, UCLA, wherever, right, I mean, right. Cal, they all come to our campus. Um, they don't come to all the campuses. That's the thing. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I think sometimes when you have the opportunity uh, to do that, you need to expose your kids to as much of that as possible and let them know. Uh, when San Jose State comes out, uh, when all those guys, you know, come come and, and you know do our area like that, or you know, uh, 
former teammate of mine, uh, Al Simmons, who coaches at New Mexico or, you know, a lot of these areas like that. It's really it's really a good opportunity for kids to get exposed. And I ask them all the time. I go, well, what are you looking at? It's yeah. not just about our kids. I'm all, hey, have you seen this kid? Have you seen that kid? Or, you know, and it helps out their process, too, because, you know, they have a job to do as well. And they need to get as much positive feedback and correct feedback as possible. So a lot of people think, oh, yeah, he's a D1 kid, but it's not always that way. And that's okay because there's tons of money, whether it be at D1, whether it be at D2, D2 yeah. whether it be NAIA, D3. I mean, we have kids that, you know, former kid of ours plays at Valley City State in, uh, in North Dakota. And it's just, you know, I'm happy for him because it's a full ride and they get the opportunity or they'll play at McPherson College in Kansas or, you know, any of those places like that. You know, it's great, great opportunity because you get your degree and your school is mm -hmm. paid for. And when it comes to parents being involved um, with their, I mean, if you have a parent and your son is obviously a playmaker, um, how much do you think they should get involved in that stuff? Um, Have you ever had that situation? Well, where I, I, I can tell you firsthand for um, when I was getting recruited, I didn't get recruited out of high school, um, but I was very fortunate to have very good years at West Valley. Um, and I probably had seven or eight scholarship offers um, um, from various schools. And my parents said to me the whole time, they were, it's your decision, you make it. <laughs> Um, so, so that was the good part about it. I think to a certain point, you can have parents that get too involved at times. Um, you know, sometimes we can't get out of our own way. Sometimes I think we all can suffer from that here and there. But I mean, I really think you have to kind of let the process evolve sometimes. Um, I think sometimes people panic in certain situations and sometimes you just have to be patient more than anything and know that hard work and I'm doing the right stuff, but that's what matters. Do you think recruiting nowadays is easier or tougher? I think it's harder because I think there's so much out there. I mean, so much crap. so much social media, <laughs> so much baloney, so much everything like that. So <coughs> when I was recruited, I mean, we're talking about, you know, 1983. This is 35 years ago. Yes, I am dating myself a little <laughs> bit, but thank goodness I don't feel my age, but you know, the process then was completely different than what it is now. I mean, there's oh, yeah. with way more social media and contact and stuff like that. It, it was, you know, uh, it, it was definitely different, but it's good now. Definitely the recruiting process. I mean, it just, but they have their restrictions too. I have friends that play basketball and coaching basketball and everybody has to abide by the rules. That's the most important thing. Well, it's May. It's, it's almost May. Uh, well, actually, no, we just started April, but spring ball's coming up. Spring there's ball's a, coming. There's a, there's a San Jose tradition or a Silicon Valley tradition called the Charlie Wittemeyer All-Star Game that's going to be coming up that yep. you've been a part of and will most likely be a part of again this year. I hope so. It's been a great <laughs> opportunity for me from doing it. Um, this is about the – I've done it three times, I think, in the last four years, and wow. one of my friends was like, he goes, he goes, I've done it once in like 15, so – I guess when you specialize in something, I mean, that's a benefit. Um, last year, actually, I coached for the South Side. I have to tell you a funny story. Um, Kyle Padilla, the head coach at <laughs> my alma mater, Lee yes, High School, yes. um, called me up, like literally when he found out he was coaching, and uh, goes, hey, I want you to coach my special teams in the All-Star game. And I went, Kyle, I can't do that. <laughs> I coach on the North. My, my players are on the North. I can't coach for the South. And he goes, yeah, but it's your alma mater asking. And I went, well, I can't argue with that. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. it was a great experience to do it. It was a one-time thing. I actually talked to a friend of mine uh, who I actually played college football with, a uh, former coach at uh, Wilcox and Monterey, Dan Brown. Uh, he had done the same thing when he coached with his brother Norman uh, on the opposite side. And he was one of the first people I called and told him, I'm all, hey, I need your opinion about something. And and it was just a fun experience. I mean, it's great to get to know those kids. Um, uh, yeah. One of the first year I did it with Coach Lugo and his staff from, from Saratoga was one of the funnest times I had doing it because, you know, we had a ton of kids from our league, um, from Homestead and Los Gatos, and getting to know those kids on that personal level like that. It, it's definitely different from going as, you know, rivals to that to all of a sudden your teammates yeah. and having a common goal and having that fun and, 
you know, I try, you know, the past couple of years, you know, doing the special team stuff. I mean, there, our kids have been super fired up in the all-star game because I told them, I go, we're going to have fun doing it and we're going to, we're going to get after it. And that's really, you know, the thing about special teams, even at Milpitas that I do too, is, you know, we, you know, we definitely emphasize certain stuff and it's super important to have that stuff because it's going to be, you know, the foundation of what you lay for everything. Definitely. Well, I wanted to ask you about safety in the game um, for your school what 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 have you guys done in the past you know I mean it's a, it's a subject right now that that's going around but well what compared you, to what it is now compared to before I think a like lot of this stuff ago, now, even? even five years ago with all the you know us as coaching staff we take concussion classes we take heat exhaustion we take cardiac arrest we take all these classes um, just to be make sure that we are you know up to date on everything um, I mean our athletic director is really great about that stuff and keeping everybody updated with first aid and CPR and all that stuff's important and the safety thing with me is the helmets are getting better and all that. Everybody's going to have, uh, you know, issues and stuff. Teaching proper technique more than anything is important. Yeah. Um, tackling with your head up, the most important, where everyone used to think, you know, because once you drop your head, that's where you're going to have problems. And, you know, it's, you know, with other injuries and stuff like that, it's ironic because I have, I hear a ton of parents always talking about, you know, I don't want my kid to play football because it's not safe and this and that. And honestly, I've seen kids get hurt more on the soccer field and the basketball court than that. Um, will I ever discourage them from playing those other sports? No, I won't because it's hard for me because I was a former soccer player. That's how I got into being a <laughs> kicker. So it's hard for me to tell my kids that, you know, hey, don't play club and all this other stuff. But the reality is of, of it for me is I tell them, I go, look, that's your educational avenue. Um, a lot of these uh, kids that play club sports, whether it be soccer, whether it be baseball, whether it be basketball, think that they're going to get a D1 scholarship when in reality there is no money in those scholarships. Uh, the bottom line is that when you have 25 people on a team and you have 11 scholarships, that's the difference. Um, the educational avenue a lot of times for soccer players is the football field. Um, because there's 85 scholarships in D1 and all this other stuff. And the same thing with, you know, some of the other sports and baseball and all that. When a lot of these uh, club people that, you know, club coaches, and that's the bad part about it, that the, some of the club coaches are in it for the income more than the teaching lesson of it. So once you're into it for the teaching aspect of it, I mean, that's really what's the most important thing, definitely. Well, there's an event coming up pretty soon. It's called the NFL Draft. It's going to be huge. And Gigantic. <laughs> and there's a Trojan, Milpitas Trojan, that, that's, that's going to be part of that. I am hoping and praying. And John Gruden, if you're listening to this, and Reggie Ooh. McKenzie too, um, please draft Vita Vea. <laughs> um, definitely will be a great thing. Um, extremely proud of him. Um, our coach, Kelly King, is having the opportunity to go to the draft. Wow, that's um, he's awesome. He's been invited by the NFL. So Does he need a camera guy? I'm like, telling dude, you, man. Behind I the scenes. I told him something. Something <laughs> like that. I go, what, are you gonna, what else are you going to do? But it's going to be a great – and I told him the other day, I go, you know, Kelly, I go, it's great for you because of all the accomplishments that you've had and all that stuff and how many kids you have put in the NFL and – you know, like I said, you know, in the last six years, there's no program that's been more, more has more wins than us. Um, I was truly blessed to win a state title this year, um, win a couple section titles in those in that amount of time too. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm a, extremely proud of our section and what they accomplished this year. And uh, when everybody was kind of talking some mess about our section at the beginning of the year and they're not this and they're not that. But ultimately, our section was the only section to win three state titles in football. So not a southern section, not a northern section, not a Sac Joaquin section. Oh, and trust me, I have a lot of friends in those sections, too, and I constantly remind them of that. <laughs> so um, definitely have to do that. But extremely excited for Vita and the more in the person that he's become and right, and right. having the opportunity that you know he's going to and um he's an extremely extremely devoted family man and you know knowing a lot of his family and a lot of the you know 
the cousins that have played here and all that and he's you know related to the Musica family and we've had tons of kids that have come through our program that have been uh, uh, you know related to that and we're definitely ecstatic about the opportunities that he's gonna definitely have at the next level and and I, I'm looking for a great career for him he's he's just He's gonna, I haven't seen anybody like him. There's, you know, I tell this to people all the time. I go, in my 10 years at Milpitas, there's been three guys that I was like, wow. Um, the first one was Keller Christ, the quarterback from Palo Alto, who's now at Tennessee, who was at Stanford. Yes. Um, he hasn't had the greatest college uh, career yet, but... I tell you what, when I saw him the first time as a sophomore, I was like, eh. He looked like he, he was a college And then guy I saw already. him as a junior, I was like, oh. <laughs> and then when I saw him as senior year, I was like, that's a man. <laughs> exactly. Um, the other one is uh, Najee Harris, mm -hmm. um, one of the greatest kids I've ever met in the 10 years I've been back at Milpitas. And, He's going to um, be a beast next He year. is a beast and really excited to to go back and see him i'm trying to get to a game in our bye week this year i have like three or four places i have to go so <laughs> i'm trying to get to one of them and stuff to see vita and Najee. and then the other one is vita vea i haven't seen anybody that's you know six four 340 pounds and runs 19 miles an hour and Goodness. he's done some things that and granted i've been in a few nfl camps here and there and I've seen him do things that I just shake my head at, and I'm just like, wow, it's just unbelievable. Super happy for him. That's going to be awesome. We're looking forward to that. We actually have another player that's probably going to get an opportunity as well. We had a, a player of ours named Ryan McKenzie mm -hmm. um, who played at Humboldt State. Um, talked to him. He's got a couple of tryouts in the CFL. I've been hearing rumors that he might be a a late round draft pick, but maybe also potentially be a, a free agent for sure. But gonna get uh, an opportunity in the NFL and super happy for him he's just probably in my 10 years I've been at Milpitas he's in my top five favorite kids of all time that I've been at Milpitas and I've had a lot of kids come through my program and I've seen a lot of these kids since they were young whether they were playing you know Pop Warner at Coyote Creek or or uh <laughs> You know, uh, I remember seeing Steven Anderson, who's a friend of mine, too, who plays for the Houston Texans right now when he was at Piedmont Hills and even before that and seeing him at Cal and having these kids, you know, and Devontae Adams, who I know a little bit from, you know, Palo Alto and having all the successes that he has. And, yeah. You know, and they didn't even make my top three list. And we're talking about two of the, you know, nicest and classiest kids that are out there. And I'm super happy for all those kids that they get the opportunity like that just to, you know, represent us. And, and you know, even the kids that are in college now, you know. I, That's right, yeah. Uh, Drew Brown at Oklahoma State now mm -hmm. I'm extremely happy for, you know. Very Shout out to worker, our hometown, yeah. Los Gatos. Um, you know, it just, it's just, it's the opportunities that they get. And, and you can't ask for more than that, definitely. These CCS guys. I mean, I, I'm from the CCS. I a went ton. to Gun High School, and you know, I consider CCS. They just hired a new coach too. I know, I know. Hopefully, they'll turn it around. <laughs> that would be nice, definitely. <laughs> I hope so too, because you know they're in our league, and you know it's uh, the El Camino League uh, is definitely come up the past couple years for us because now they're a B league instead of a C league. Um, they've had teams that usually will win seven games a year, two or three teams, which was, you know, great. I'm extremely proud of, you know, the league that we play in, uh, the DAL. Um, I think we're the top public school league. Um, the PAL Bay had a really good run last year with some mm -hmm. good teams with, you know, Aragon and uh, MA and, Half you know, Moon the, Bay too, and right? Half Moon Bay. Yeah, I was really rooting for them at state too. I was rooting for everybody that was from our section yeah. because – you know, I was hoping and, you know, we would do even better and to have, you know, Half Moon Bay only lose by, you know, a few points and then have uh, a uh, yeah. Salinas lose in the NorCal final uh, only by a few points. Um, I was extremely proud of our representation from from the CCS. Are you happy with the playoff system that we have right now? Um, I am because I think that, you know, I don't know what they're going to do as far as making it a level playing field. They always talk about competitive equity. They talk about, you know, enrollment and all this stuff. It Really, they have to really decide what they're going to do. Um, I know our playoff system, they were thinking about changing it, but it's not going to be changed, so it's going to be the same as next year. Um, depends on what the CIF and the state does, too, because they're talking about not bringing runners up. 
And the second they do that is, you know, now you have two or three sections that send runners up. Now you're going to have the whole dilemma back in the NCS with, oh, it's De La Salle and everybody else. You're, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're out of luck. Sorry. But, you know, that's the that's the, the bummer part about it and trying to make it, you know, even for as many people as they can. Uh, having those lower two divisions with the B and C schools, I think, is a great is a great opportunity when, you know, you have I mean, you had two teams from the same league last year in Gilroy in Division four and Christopher. Shout out to my buddy Tim Perleone, another Cal State Hayward guy. Hey, they had an awesome um, year. To the D5 champs. Yeah, we're pretty, you know, my team at Cal State Hayward that year, um, we probably have probably 15 guys coaching at different programs, wow. whether it's there and um, Granite Bay. Uh, Bill Neal, who was our quarterback, has been there for a couple years. Um, and they won state a couple years ago. And, uh, my good friend Trent Merzon, who's at Oakdale, the head coach, and they won a state title last year. And um, so we're pretty proud of, you know, the, the, the legacy that we're leaving as far as, you know, not just as, you know, players that we had success, but being successful coaches and passing this stuff down to these kids. I just thought of a question. So a couple of weeks ago, we covered the state championship. And I was really, uh, this is basketball, basketball. And I was, I was really impressed with the SoCal teams. Yeah. <laughs> NorCal didn't do too well. I mean, I think we had two winners out of 12. Okay. But, so here's, um, oh, go ahead. Well, I, I think you know my question already. What do you think about this transfer rule? Because it seems like down south they have something. What transfer rule? <laughs> I don't know if they have one down there. Um, the unfortunate I know, thing they don't is, have well, I mean. the. And I don't think it's just basketball. I think it's all it's the sports. It's not. It's all sports. Um, you know, a couple years ago when – Bellman played in the state title game, I think it was, and I think they had these two players that I believe they were playing against, and they'd been to four different high schools in four years. Yes. And to me, that's where you really have to start looking at it and say, okay, are we here there for academics? Are we here for sports? Majority <laughs> of them are going to, let's, let's call it what it is, they're going to be there for sports. I yeah. mean, that's, that's going to be, because you're always looking at what's going to be the best avenue for me. Um, you know, some of those uh, kids from Southern California that transfer from programs like Centennial to John Bosco or something like that to where it's, okay, right. why are you making that move? And, you know, because it's almost like you're still going to get the exposure. It's not going to do any more than that. Well, Matter Day is um, getting a quarterback from Texas. Yes. And I, yeah. I was like, wait, is this college already? He's like, Well, and that's <laughs> really the point. Well, and well, here's the irony. You look at how successful Martyr Day was this year. This was their first state title, just like ours yeah. and some of the others, which yeah. which you kind of look at it. Well, it goes back to the, the game a couple years ago. Here's what bothered me was when St. Bon John Bosco and De La Salle played in the state title game. Bosco had 19 Division One kids. Is that the one with Rosen? That came up in no, it was after that. It was after uh, that, when okay. Damian Mau Mau was on that team. Okay, okay, and, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they had like 19 kids come in for a year and barely beat you know De La Salle. The difference in those teams like that is you have you know when you have teams come in like that. Now you're almost a football factory more than anything. Exactly. Whether it's IMG Academy, whether it's Bishop Gorman, whether it's Bosco. Now. A lot of those schools have had long tradition. That's what a lot of people don't realize. Um, you look at, you know, Bishop Gorman. You know, their most one mm -hmm. of their most first and famous alums was David Hum, the former quarterback at at uh, uh, for the Raiders. And then you look at the places like Bosco and all that. I knew about a lot of those schools when I was in high school because my cousins went to Crespi in Southern California. Okay. So I knew about Servite and I knew Alamany yeah. and all these other schools. So I knew about a lot of the SoCal powers and what they're like. You have to look at it as the sheer numbers too. I remember my friends used to say, oh, the Sac Joaquin section is putting X amount of players in colleges more than your section, Amal. Well, Per capita, it's not because if you look at the sheer numbers of the kids yes. that are there, um, I laid this out to them. I go, there was a few years ago, there was um, 18 schools in the Central Coast section that had 2,000 kids or more. In the Sac Joaquin section, there was over 40. So just <laughs> those right there, I mean, you're talking about 250 to 300,000 kids. Oh, yeah. Just over that. So naturally, you're going to have more just by sheer numbers. Same thing in the southern sections. It's gigantic. 
There are so many kids down there and so many programs, so many leagues, everything like that, that you're definitely going to have more kids coming out of those areas like that. The northern section is tiny. They mm -hmm. have 43 schools. You know, our section, we have 94, I believe, that play football. The north coast section has like 102 or 103. They're only five or six more than us. Wow. But yet they send like 1,000 teams to the playoffs. That's what I don't understand. Like 75% of their section makes the playoffs. Yeah, it seems like all the areas are, all the sections are different. Different roles. Yeah. Different setup. Definitely. I mean, we have a PowerPoint system, which some people look at. You know, we were the, one of the first to have an open division, mm -hmm. which, you know, we ended up getting rid of, which I was glad to. You know, if they want to do it, you know, at competitive equity, then do it that way. Um, we're one of the only sections as well that's, you know, not so much dominated, but uh, you know, the West Catholic is a power in our section, definitely. You don't see that from private schools and other sections like that. It's yeah, completely yeah. different. So, you know, it's funny, like in a lot of the schools in the Sac Joaquin section, they laugh when they go to private schools because their public schools are so good. A lot of them do have open enrollment. You, you can go to two or three different schools. <laughs> so when it's a level playing field for everybody. Now, we've had kids transfer in, but they've had to move, too. That's the yeah. thing is when you have a full family move and stuff like that, then you're okay. I think that's why they got rid of some of the, the rules they did on the athletically motivated transfer. Yes. Because these kids would go on. That was something new on, this past year, Yeah, right? because I think it needed to happen because parents were going online and, you know, basically saying stuff or, you know, saying stuff that was, you know, basically pointing to an athletically motivated transfer when all you had to do was say, it's more convenient for me to go to school here. Yeah. Uh, less was more and sometimes like that. And I think they really realized in those situations because, and it's more of the private school kids wanting to go back to their public school. See, to me, I don't think that mm -hmm. should be a sit out period at all because you're going back to your natural school period. That's in your neighborhood period. It's not like you're moving there or anything like that, but you know, a lot of the stuff with the enrollment and stuff I do like definitely couple more questions man it, it's always like one hour two hour talk with you man when we talk on the phone it, this always. is awesome because now we got it on rec always. record um but do you think public schools and private schools should have different playoff brackets <sighs> you know i've thought about that question a lot of times <laughs> um in certain stuff maybe um like let's take basketball for instance you yes. know you look at a lot of the successful programs you know, whether it be the boys or even, you know, the girls that, you know, look how much Eastside Prep, uh, Pinewood, oh, um, yeah. uh, Archbishop Mitty. I mean, Sue Phillips does a great job there and has done a great job for years. Um, I think more in basketball, I think that you can really dominate somebody like that because it's five on five. You look yes. at all the, you know, the uh, teams that do stuff like that. I think football is a little bit different. Um, because it's 11 on 11, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, you can have success more than anything like that at, you know, any level like that. But, you know, that's a whole can of worms because then it's almost like, you know, no one's going to be happy in that situation because <laughs> let's say it happens. And I, I mean, the West Catholics don't want to play each other anyway in the playoffs. Yeah, that's yeah. why they had the rules and this and that. Cause they fear that, you know, we go through murderer's row in our league play and now we have to do it again. And well, if that's, you know what it is, you know, my, my recruiting boundary is the city of Milpitas. It's not Santa Clara Valley. So, when you look at it that way, I mean, that's really what you have to, you know, you got to take it with a grain of salt here and there and say, okay, what's, what's the best for our section, not just one particular program or mm -hmm. league or mm -hmm. anything like that. What's best as a whole. And that's why I like the new expanded playoffs and stuff, because before you had five state titles and that's it. Yeah. And you had to be chosen to get to a state title. Yes. Um, now I think with the regionals and all that, because the bottom line is you had other states. Some people are like, well, there's 13 state champions. Well, there's 28 in New Jersey, and some of those have public and private that are separate. You know, same thing with Texas. There's a, there's a there's bunch Texas, of them. Yeah. Um, my old roommate from New Mexico State, Kim Lachlan, his uh, brother actually played in the NFL, and Kim got drafted by the, the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, his nephew actually won a state title this year at Rockdale High School in wow. uh, Texas. Extremely happy for him. Um, uh, just, you know, cause I know how hard of an accomplishment it is because I really realized at the end of this year, um, 
it's like I told some of our kids and I told Tariq and some others this. I go, you know, they all know I've had tryouts in the NFL, got a scholarship in college, played in college, played in high school. I told them all, I go, this is the greatest football memory of my life, and it's not even close because of the just I never thought that, you know, coaching accolades like this would be so much more than individual accolades, but it's definitely more rewarding as far as that goes for sure. It's definitely been a great season for you guys. I mean, great run. So, I mean, the last, what, four or five years have been. So, in the last, I, know it's I think been up Coach and down, King was yeah. like, in the last six years, there's been no program that's won more game than us. Um, that's right. None of the West Catholics, who I have tremendous amounts of respect for, I do. Um, I have a lot of friends that coach, whether they're at St. Francis or Sarah or Mitty or, you know, Valley Christian or any of those, you know. Uh, I'm happy when those kids get out and get the exposure that they do, but I'm also happy when, you know, the public schools and what we do when we uh, uh, play and compete and just have great opportunities and, and great things happen in that. And it just, that's what it's really about, all about the kids. It's all about the kids and you guys are doing a great job with it. We're looking forward to really just keeping keeping an eye out on you guys i'm ready to keep know. going <laughs> i'm ready to keep going and get at it we've been in the weight room since january so nice. like we said it's really important but it's kind of funny i've been telling a lot of my friends and stuff i go i'm really going to enjoy this one because it's almost it's almost been the more humbling to me than anything in this whole experience when we finally had the opportunity to you know go to southwest and hostile territory mm -hmm. and down in el central california and just end up winning a state title and it's still there's times I just will think about it and it gives me goosebumps and we're super excited because our ring ceremony is coming up pretty right. soon and it's just been an over I want to be there it's I'll definitely <laughs> let you know but it's been an overwhelming situation from being honored by you know the school district at Ramopitas with you know Chris Norwood and a lot of the great stuff he does and supports our program and then to Pomeroy Middle School, which is right next to Milpitas, mm -hmm. and they had a huge autograph signing for us that wow. I think our kids were more blown away than anything. And you know, then having a celebration at the school that recognized us, and having a state championship banner, and then being able to go to the state capitol and being honored by them and. I can't wait to get my rings. Our kids have been like, when are they coming, coach? And I talked to coach the other day. So we actually did two rings this year, which is kind of cool. Not not many schools really did that. We did a NorCal ring, and wow. we did a state championship ring. So super excited to that because that's really going to be, you know, it's going to be an emotional day too because the great thing about it is even when we got to the Capitol and stuff was us getting together again as a family. And, I mean, that's really what the best thing about it is. We can't you know, say enough when I see these kids and, you know, it's just the love I have for them and the, the relationships I have with them is is always going to look at them as a state title and a state champ. And that's, it's priceless, definitely. Well, I'm, I'm happy for you, for your program, for the kids. Thanks a lot, man. The tradition is going to keep Gotta going. Got to keep it rolling. It's going to keep going. M-Town. You know, the bar's been set. So all the 2019 2021 20, future Mopitas Trojans, you have a lot to, to. And a lot of those up. kids do come around our program. That's yeah, the funny thing yeah. about it. I think I, I met the Bracy twins because uh, our our wide receiver coach Ray Elsey and our uh, our JV coach on the secondary Andre Bentner. They coach the Milpitas Knights, and I think I saw the Bracys the first time when they were in probably like fifth grade. I went out to one of their games and. It was so funny. I heard all of a sudden Coach Elsie yell out a signal, doubles, doubles, doubles. And I was like, oh, my gosh, they're running our offense. So that was pretty cool. And to know these kids and, you know, Coach elsie has been a huge, huge impact in a lot of those kids in the Knights program to have all that stuff there. And, and uh, you know, Bobby Carswell, who coached with us, was uh, the head of there. Now it's uh, Evan Matau. So they run a great program out there. And our feeder system is you know, love the kids out there, and it's just a great opportunity in a great city. I love Milpitas. It's an awesome place to be. So what's next for you, Coach? I mean, I mean, not what's next, but, 
I mean, I know you're you're on Peter's upcoming you ever, season. <laughs> <laughs> season. Have you ever thought about going to the next level, college? Uh, I have. I mean, I have friends of mine that coach in college and stuff, and uh, they're like, Vito, you you easily could make the transition <laughs> and all that stuff. And I easily. know I could, but I really like doing it at the level here. Um, it's not my full-time job. It's my passion stuff I get to do. I've been in the real estate industry for 23 years. I was, was going to ask you about that. Like, and, uh, yeah, I've been doing stuff in the mortgage industry for 23 gotcha. years and uh, in in uh, purchases and sales. Um, that's my meat and potatoes, definitely. And But it allows me the freedom to do all the, the, real, the, the kicking camp stuff and the coaching. I see. I see. Well, I mean, you've... We've talked so many times, and I'm glad that we finally sat down. Absolutely. <laughs> and Absolutely. this is not going to be the only time. You know, I always say, like, this is this is an avenue to get to know coaches, for coaches to be able to talk about themselves. Definitely. Because you guys do so much for the kids that, man, it's your turn, you know. And, and, and I really do enjoy learning about your program, learning about you and your background. And, and I'm, Absolutely. You know, That's the best part about it. We'll, like we'll, I said, we'll it's the relationships, again. for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, but as far as, you know, this upcoming season, man, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to that barbecue, too. I, yeah. I, we're, I heard, uh, heard it's going to so, be some, uh, some good food. Oh, yeah. them, <laughs> The Polly's cook it up. We love them. Um, Vita's dad, John Vea. And a lot of times at our – so every Thursday night we have a team dinner and commitment circle. And we're pretty – oh, there's, he's probably well, starting a barbecue <laughs> right now. It's about to burn down. Welcome to San Jose. Hey, no San kidding. San Jose not. Fire Department. They're Shout on out. fire. That's right. It's on fire. <laughs> but no, he actually, uh, they do big, huge barbecues for us. And um, we're talking steak, ribs, chicken, all right, you're gonna have to repeat pig. all that. that Is that, that fire was, truck gone that now? Was, that was I pretty think they're loud. on their way. <laughs> Hey, I've seen this. I've seen the barbecue that John has. Sometimes it gets pretty roaring and stuff. But yeah, we're doing a big barbecue for our uh, at the school. Uh, more of a celebration with anything when we get our rings and stuff. And nice. Um, you know the the uh, I love the Polynesian culture so much because they are just so family oriented. Um, just great people. Um, just love them to death. Um, it just it's always a great celebration of that stuff. And uh, it's it's I can't even say enough about it, and we're super excited to get it. I know the kids are; they've been waiting on their rings because <laughs> some of my other friends have gotten their rings already. But but I was like, oh, that's definitely what it's about. And I've been saying the same thing too. Uh, you know, it's just it's nice having that opportunity to do that stuff and 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 be recognized like that and get those things. Definitely. Well, it's 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 gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun, and you know I. I do want to be able to talk to Tariq before he leaves for for Notre Dame, but Definitely. he's going to be. I, I I see a lot of good qualities in that kid. I, I think he's going to he's going to go far with this. You know, we've been blessed at Milpitas to see some really great kids. I mean, when we saw Vita Vea as a freshman, mm -hmm. we were like, okay, that's a kid that's going to play on Sundays. And the same thing that Kelly dealt with with you know Tab Perry or Delta O'Neill or. You know, he's had so many kids go through his program, D1 kids that played, um, and that have made an impact not just, you know, on the field but in the community as well. Yes. Which, uh, you know, and, they, and and the cool thing is is that the kids see the relationship that Coach King, um, Coach Matthews, and I have had for 30-plus years and three former players that, you know, came from three different places, you know, me at Lee High School, uh, mm -hmm. Kelly at Milpitas High School, and Coach Matthews at Woodside High School, and to have all those guys, you know, come together like that for the common goal like that, and just, it's still, I'm still on a high. It really <laughs> is from winning a state title and finally, you know, achieving this, and it's just been, it's just been the best. I can't even, I can't, I'm, I'm so blessed and thankful and grateful. Well, I, know awesome. you guys, I know you guys just are just getting started in a way, but uh, I do want to congratulate you guys. Thank and you so much, man. It's going to be been... fun to see what's next for the Milpitas Time to Trojans. defend it. Time to defend That's it. That's the hard part. <laughs> That's the hard part. Can't be complacent more than and, anything. And, and we're going to sit down again and, and do some updates. Uh, awesome. And, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get to see you at the All-Star Game, which I'm pretty sure we will. But yeah, Levi Stadium is a fun place, definitely. It's not going to be at Levi's. Where's it going to be? It's going to be at Los Gatos High School. Oh, good Lord. 
<laughs> my old stomping grounds. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be at Los Gatos. And I'm kind of, I asked him about the parking. He's like, how are you guys going to have people yeah. go to the game? There's limited parking. You think, There's lots you of think, You think Levi Stadium has parking issues. Wait till you go to that. It's definitely Goodness. tiny. They've been doing a lot of work down there. I've seen a lot. I was There's actually there yesterday. I work with uh, uh, their kicker there, and um, he actually, uh, uh, you know, and I saw the stuff that's going on there and the construction and stuff, but um, it'll be good. It's all about, you know, the kid. It's all about the game anyway. Yeah. I wish I wish they would start playing. Hey, shout out to Avaya Stadium. Start playing football there. Why State title they? games, everything. It's exactly. the perfect it's the venue. Perfect. Exactly. It is. 18,000 people. That place would be full right next to the airport. Um, have the top five state title games there. I mean, Sacramento's okay, but, you know, the unfortunate issues they had with the weather last year when, you know, in the St. Francis game more than anything, when you have 50-mile-an-hour winds, and it's just you don't want to see football like that. Well, you and, know we're not going to be there next year. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the good thing because if you're in a lower division, yeah, they're going to Southwest College, I believe. Somewhere down there. Yeah, down south. So that'll be all the top five games to open, 1A, 1AA, uh, 2A, and 2AA. But then all the lower division games will be at the host school. So it'd be kind of nice. Kind of nice if we can get back there. You know, we just, you know, one game at a time, you know, we just have to, you know, you have to stay on the grind more than anything, just you know, persevere more than anything and get through it because it is a grind. Definitely. You know, for the last (laughs) three years, we've been, you know, well into December playing and right before Christmas and stuff. So, but definitely the culmination this year was definitely one of the best for sure. You know what I'm going to have to do with this? I'm going to have a checklist. There's going to be a checklist in the intro. I'm going to write down everything that we talked about, (laughs) like an outline. Exactly. (laughs) Because there's a lot. Yeah, there and, is. And, and I know it can help a lot of parents, can help a lot of kids. Absolutely. And it will also inform, you know, your, the people that are currently in your program and following your program of some of the background of, of you and, and coach and, and everything. And so, yeah, I'm going to have to do that. We're just trying to keep <laughs> after it. Definitely we have to. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you for thank coming, Thank you so coach. much, man. It was an honor. And for all you guys listening, thank you for listening to this one hour and 12 minute conversation <laughs> we could have gone more that's we, for we sure could, we could have a four hour show right now on, you know i don't know if people are ready for that yet they're, no they're not we'll give it to them in small doses <laughs> all right coach thanks a lot bud appreciate your time you too man